Ovdje sam u ambasadi Italije. U isto vreme je to i rezidencija ambasadora. Sedim sa ambasadorom Italije i sa njegovom suprugom. Ova zgrada ima istorijski značaj. 1924. godine je sazidana. Mene interesuje kako su se oni osjećali kada su došli u Beograd i kada su ušli u ovu zgradu. Šta je ono što im je palo na pamet? Jer ovde kao da smo u Italiji. Ja imam taj utisak. I explain where I am and I'm interested in what you have been thinking when you walked in, you know, and you said this is your home for future years, etc. Try to think that day. Uh, it's rather interesting because uh, this is a public space and uh, it's very much Italian. So on the one hand, I thought, okay, this is not really my um, environment. Uh, but on the other hand, I said, I recognize something very familiar uh, in the style, in um, the way the, uh, the decor. Um, so uh, I found this very familiar. And uh, I think this residence is very much an expression of uh, um, Italian style, Italian elegance, and made in Italy in, uh, in general. Um, I think that uh, probably what I like the most is that you can feel, as you know, anything in made in Italy, this sort of um, search for beauty uh, that we are always looking for. And uh, beauty is one of our uh, poets used to say, one contemporary poet, um, uh, her name was Alda Merini, she died just a few years ago. Uh, she used to say in one of her aphorisms that uh, beauty is but a fallen um, darkness and the light that comes out of it. And I like to think that uh, the seek um, of light is part of this search for beauty that is very much in the Italian DNA. So this is what I thought and this is what I like about this place. <clears throat> and you, how you felt when you walked in? Uh, I felt uh, very well in the sense that uh, I already knew the residents, so I knew that uh, this was a very important uh, historical palace. Uh, but immediately I realized that uh, this was a wonderful instrument to develop the relationship between uh, Italy and Serbia. Because for me, uh, Bircianinova is the house of the friendship between Italy and Serbia. It's the house where we develop our cooperation, where, uh, where I work, where I work with uh, the Serbian friends, the Serbian authorities, where I invite uh, the political personality also from Italy. So it's really a very special place, not only for Italy, but for the relationship between Italy and Serbia. You know what I noticed? I noticed that, in fact, like you are creating a very specif specific school of diplomacy, you are working permanently. Everything what you do is work. You put it in a very, very specific artistic way. You make receptions, you are receiving people of different kind, but everything what you do is to promote those relationships. Did you learn that how to do it or this is your own talent? What it is? Because it's no. different, you know? No, I'm just doing No, what, no, I'm what, telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing what, what the Italian ambassadors uh, are supposed to do, which is uh, to try to, first of all, to showcase what Italy is. As Eugenia was saying, uh, the beauty and uh, the, the cultural heritage is really part of our culture. So this building is uh, really a, a magnificent e example of, uh, uh, of this awareness that we have. So uh, I have to use it. I cannot just uh, stay here and look at the beauty. I have to use this beauty to develop the cooperation with uh, Serbia in all the possible fields, political, economic, uh, made in Italy, scientific cooperation. We are trying really to develop uh, the relationship uh, as much as we can. And in the last year, I have to say, 
uh, we succeeded uh, in uh, uh, developing, first of all, the political dialogue with many ministers coming here, and finally the Prime Minister Meloni coming to, to Belgrade. But also economically, uh, we, we did a lot of things. In particular, we reinforced very much uh, the institutional presence of Italy in Belgrade. Do you think that my question was stupid, that he's doing it on a very, on a very no. specific way? But he's Please a diplomat, me. so he gave you a diplomatic answer. <laughs> but, but you agree it's so different. Um, Please tell I me. agree on the second part of what he said. On the first part, what you asked about whether it is your talent or your job or the way it is done, I think it's a mixture of both, uh, I must say. He, I mean, he's been working as a diplomat for many years, so he learned how to do things. He learned from other, diplom from other diplomats, for other, from other ambassadors. But I think he has a very, very, he has a wonderful talent uh, for this job. And also he is, um, he's a very active, he has a very active mind. Uh, Luca likes to do a hundred things. So um, I think that he gave a very personal touch to, you know, um, uh, to, this, to his mission, this is what I meant, here in Serbia. Is he checking up some of his ways with you? Oh, no, not at all. No, no, no. Never. He goes his own way. No, no, no. no. Luca you know? goes his own way in life. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. about uh, when the things are very sensitive mm. and he's the one who has to deliver it mm. and he puts the person in a very nice like this nice surrounding beautiful he serves a lovely meal then he has beautiful sweets at the end mm. how he delivers negative things this is I was never present, but I would be interested to see that how somebody swallows a thing which is not pleasant in this ambience. But this, this is something you, know, you don't have to ask me, you have to no, ask No, 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 I'm looking at you, I'm looking at you and looking at him, he's, he's laughing at my observation. This is diplomacy, to help somebody swallow a very, very harsh thing. This is diplomacy in a way. A good diplomat can make such a, such a nice package that you even don't know what you said yes. Yes, of course, but fortunately, uh, at least in the relationship between Italy and Serbia, we, are, uh, such a, we have a, such a positive um, cooperation that uh, there are really few moments when we have to swallow uh, negative uh, pills. Uh, so uh, I don't find myself many times uh, in this position um, here. But uh, as I generally uh, say, uh, between diplomats, uh, when you are defending your national interest, the others uh, understand very well what you are doing and they are ready to accept what you are doing. And I do the same with uh, my counterparts. If they are defending uh, their legitimate national interest, they have a different position in comparison with my position. We discuss, but uh, we respect each other. And uh, I mean, um, we try sometimes also to, uh, to pass uh, a negative message if needed, but always uh, in full respect of uh, the other position. Are you a messenger sometimes when you are messaging something? For example, you want to say something and then you make it the way, so nice way, then the thing is accepted. The way how you put it is always very, very nice. It's interesting. 
I have to listen to it three times to understand the message. Is it an art? Sometimes uh, it is important also to avoid to say something. So also the silence is a message sometimes. So you have to understand when it is uh, important to speak, when it is uh, uh, necessary to, to be silent. So this is another important element to be considered. in front of our, um, one of the most important paintings of this uh, residence, which is the portrait of um, Queen Elena of uh, Italy. It was done by Giuseppe Amisani in 1925, and uh, it is actually a recent acquisition uh, for this residence because um, it came here in the early uh, 2000s. It was part of the collection of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Rome and Ambassador Zanardi Landi brought it here in 2002 and 2003, something like that. So it's a very early uh, portrait. But it's, um, he said it is right that this portrait you know, uh, is hanging here in, uh, uh, in the residency of the Italian ambassador in, in Belgrade. And I think he was right. I think it was a good um, Yeah, it was idea. right uh, because uh, Queen uh, Elena uh, was uh, actually at, this, at the beginning of the construction of this uh, residence, she had a very important role because uh, she decided uh, to have a very nice uh, embassy in uh, Belgrade. So she chose uh, the location, she chose uh, the architect, uh, the design, the decor. This is why, I mean, uh, as Eugenia was saying, it was so important to have uh, uh, her portrait here uh, at the residence. So her personality uh, is a very important uh, personality for Italy, for uh, uh, the relationship between um, Italy and uh, Serbia. I think I particularly like the, uh, the painting and the idea of having Queen Elena here with us because uh, she was a much beloved queen. Uh, she was uh, a very a sort of uh, example of uh, female empowerment, of women's empowerment uh, in the early 1900s. Um, she was very well read in uh, politics, she was well read in literature, she loved art, she was very drawn to others, she was a philanthropist. Uh, she helped people during the earthquake in Italy in 1908 in southern Italy. Uh, she organized uh, mass medical rescue for the victims. She did the same thing for um, uh, you know, the victims of World War I. Uh, she even organized a hospital inside the uh, Palazzo del Quirinale, which was then the residency of the king of, of Italy. So she was um, a very, uh, you know, she was somebody who, was, who liked the others, who wanted to help, and I think who made a difference in history. That's why she was so much beloved by Italians. Ambassador, now we are going to the place where you are making beautiful dinners. In fact, you're working, then you're working. Yes, actually, we, we, this is why we, we, we call our dinner and our lunch working dinner and working lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, do you like to sit in this, in this room? I like very much uh, to sit in this room uh, and I use it generally for uh, meetings 
that are a little bit uh, delicate because it is uh, a more cozy room. So when uh, we are in a small format to discuss uh, delicate issue, I prefer to stay here instead of being in the main hall of the residence. So this is a very special place for, for many reasons. Also historically, Eugenia, you know much better than I do. Yeah, I mean, I like this room very much. It's my favorite room on the floor. It's small, it's cozy, it's quiet, and it has a very interesting story. It's called the Patriarch's Room, but it's not historically the Patriarch's Room. It's called, it's been called like that by the uh, embassy personnel because uh, at the end of the 1990s, uh, the uh, Patriarch of the Orthodox, of the Serbian Orthodox Church came here for our national holiday um, on June the 2nd, and he was already very, very old. And so um, he asked to be, you know, seated somewhere. And so the embassy personnel, you know, brought him here and he sat here for the entire duration of the uh, national holiday, national uh, feast. And uh, he received people in here and was brought food and drinks here. So he spent the entire time here. So that's why this is called the Patriarch's uh, Room. And we still call it that way and we like it very much. It has a wonderful marble table. It's, uh, it has very nice uh, furniture, uh, beautiful lamps. So um, it's beautiful, it's nice, and it has a, an interesting story. I noticed that you feel very well here. I do, yes, in this room I do. Not in yeah. the room, I mean being here. I do. Well, I feel very well in, in, in Belgrade. I feel very well, you know, having this kind of uh, life, which happens probably once or twice in a lifetime if you're married to a diplomat. So, uh, and I'm enjoying very much the city. So I think it's full of life, full of things to do. And uh, yes, I'm, I'm fine. I feel very well in here. I can see that. <laughs> That's good. Kada sretnete Italijanku, onda ne smete da propustite priliku da konstatujete njen modni zapis. Ja imam priliku da to vidim. I see what you're wearing. It's a specific style. When I see Italian woman, I always recognize the style. Always. Oh, that's very good. I, I really don't have... Uh very many rules in dressing. The only thing I really care about is that um, I dress the way I like and that I have my own style. Whether it is fashionable or not, I don't care. But I want to be sort of recognizable by the way I dress and by, you know, the, the jewels I, I, I wear. And uh, obviously I'm Italian, so I'm blessed. <laughs> With, uh, with fashion and with, uh, you know, choosing among different things. Um, I particularly like this, <clears throat> um, this piece of jewel because it's uh, made by Angela Caputi and she's one of our best uh, jewelers. Her jewels are always very um, colorful, they're big, they are in their own way excessive. And I like excessive jewelry, you see also my, my uh, uh, my ring. Uh, it was made by an Italian artisan and uh, alas I forgot the name but um, it's it's a hundred percent Italian so as long as things are colorful, nicely made and recognizable I'm all for them. How you explain your red stockings? Oh that's very easy to explain. I have red stockings, I have red lipstick, I have red um, uh, nail polish it's just my favorite color. Black and red are my favorite colors. So I tend to dress very often in black or red, or black and red. Here we 
area in the chapel of the embassy which is a very uh, special place because not every embassy has a chapel. So uh, the Italian embassy in Belgrade is really something particular also because there is this uh, chapel, which is uh, uh, decorated with very nice uh, paintings. Here we have uh, Santo Stefano. Uh, there we have uh, San Paolo. These are two important paintings of the 18th century. Uh, the painters are Gandolfi brothers coming from Bologna. So, I mean, uh, Santo Stefano, San Paolo, but we have also San Marco, the lion of San Marco, which is a, a very particular lion because he is seated. Because generally, the lion of San Marco is standing. Here is the only lion seated, which is something very peculiar. And then we have uh, the windows, Eugenia, you know yeah, the story. The, the windows are, you know, have an interesting story because the chapel was built in the 1930s, so after the main building. But uh, the, the windows were destroyed during World War II, so they were remade uh, after the war, but they were completely transparent. Only at the end of the 1960s, this uh, Serbian painter, Peja Milosavljevic, uh, decided to donate his drawings for, um, for the windows of the chapel to Italy. And so he did. So the, uh, these are from the late 1960s, and uh, so they, are, you know, they were made later. Uh, but they are very nice. Very, uh, they are a combination of Italian and Serbian art. This chapel is a combination of both. Mm -hmm. And we are using the chapel uh, very often, also for services. We even uh, had uh, recently uh, a member of uh, uh, the Italian team here who decided to baptize uh, uh, the, the son here in, in the chapel. So it was a very nice moment for all the community of the embassy here in Belgrade. Thank you. 